feet today. Open up your Bibles this morning. Hallelujah. Love blessing the moms. Thank God for the moms. We wouldn't be here without the moms. <laughs> Amen. Open your Bibles, if you would, please, to Second Chronicles. Got something here that I'm working on. Uh, Y'all know me probably by now. I'm not very traditional. So this, this isn't like a Mother's Day sermon. I believe Mother's Day should be every day. Yeah, praise the Lord. I, all the moms should have just like, wow, I love you. Amen, amen. I came, I came up in here a couple Wednesday nights ago is our night service. By the way, y'all know we got church on Wednesday nights? Did y'all know that? I just didn't know if y'all know that. But came up here on a Wednesday night, and God had spoke a phrase in my heart about a direction over this house and what he's saying to us. Because I believe we're about to see some of the greatest days we've ever seen. I don't say that flippantly. I believe my faith is there. I believe God is pressing us into a dimension where his glory is going to be magnified. Amen. So I came up in here, and I had something in my heart, and I began to go down a trail with it just a little bit. And I felt so compelled over the last couple of weeks to just rehearse it and keep pushing it into the atmosphere of this house because I believe what God's about to do in your family and in your life is going to super exceed anything he's ever done in your family and in your life. Now, I know it's Mother's Day, and y'all kind of getting tight on me, but it's all right to say amen. It's all right to say amen, because I believe God wants to do something in this place today. I'm telling you, God wants to do something in your life today. Second Chronicles chapter 20. I'm just going to do a little bit of reading today. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse number 1. It says, Now it came about after this that the sons of Moab and the sons of Ammon, together with the Minyanites, they came to make war against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and reported to Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea out of Aram. And behold, they are in Hazan Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat was afraid, and he turned his attention to seek the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judah. So Judah gathered together to seek help from the Lord. They even came from the cities of Judah to seek the Lord. Look with me in verse number 11 because verse number 5 picks up a prayer that Jehoshaphat begins to pray. And we pick part of that prayer up in verse number 11. He says, see how they are rewarding us by coming to drive us out of your possession, which you have given to us as an inheritance. Our God, will you not judge them? For we are powerless before this great multitude who are coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are on you. All of Judah was standing before the Lord with their infants, their wives, and their children. And then in, the midst, then in the midst of the assembly, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mathaniah, the Levite, the son of Asaph. And he said, listen, all of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord, do not fear or be dismayed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours but it's God's. Oh, somebody just shot a shout right there. Verse number 16, tomorrow go down, go down against them. Behold, they will come up by the accent of Ziz, and you will find that at the end of the valley in the front of the wilderness of Jeru. Verse number 17, you need not fight in this battle. Station yourselves. Stand and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out to face them, for the Lord is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head and his face to the ground, and all of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites from the sons of, of, the, of the Korites and the sons of Kor stood up, and they began to praise the God of Israel with a very loud voice. Verse number 20. And they arose early in the morning, and they went out to the wilderness of Tekoa, and they went out against Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, O Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Put your trust in the Lord your God, and you will be established. 
put your trust in his prophets and succeed. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who sang to the Lord, those who praised him in holy attire. They went out before the army and said, Give thanks to the Lord, for his loving kindness is everlasting. And when they began singing and praising, the Lord set ambushes against the sons of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, so that they were routed. Literally, they were struck down. Verse number 25, when Jehoshaphat and all his people came to, to take their spoil, they found so much among them, including goods, garments, and valuable things that they took for themselves, more than they could carry. And they were three days taking the spoil because there was so much. Verse number 27, last verse. And every man of Judah and Jerusalem returned with Jehoshaphat at their head, returning to Jerusalem with joy, for the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. The Lord made them rejoice. I'm telling you, it's about to be a Holy Ghost party up in here. What did Bobby Chan say? It's a Holy Ghost party. It's a Holy Ghost party that won't stop. Yeah. Look with me in verse number 17. Verse number 17. I want to show you this real quick. He said, you need not fight in this battle. Station yourselves. Stand and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. Because the Lord is with you. I came up in here a couple Wednesday nights ago in our at night service with this thought in my heart. God is about to do a thing. And I'm trying to tell somebody today, God is about to do a thing in your life. And you need not fight in this battle, but just position yourself and look what the Lord is about to do on your behalf. I need you to turn around and push on about three good people and tell them life as you know it is about to change. Come on, push them real good and tell them life as you know it is about to change. Come on, stir it up in here on this Mother's Day morning. Push on somebody real good and tell them the Lord is about to do something in your midst. Yes, he is. So, Lord, we thank you today for the spirit of wisdom. Thank you today, Lord, for the spirit of truth. Thank you today, Holy Spirit, that you are the preacher and the teacher. You're the communicator and the revelator. Thank you for what you're going to do in this house today. Holy Spirit, I thank you for touching people's hearts and lives all over this building today. Thank you, Lord, for the Word of God, the engrafted Word of God that's able to save our soul. Thank you today for what you're going to do. We give you praise in advance for this is your people. This is your hour. This is your day we've been summoned to. Thank you, Lord, for making your Word alive to us, and we honor you today. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody together said amen and amen and amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. Our time is really short today, so I'm just going to go as fast as I can to get to where I need to go. But I want to take just a few moments and lay somewhat of a small foundation here so that you'll understand exactly how we're going to get to where we're going. There are principles and there are truths in God's Word. And once you have learned to identify those truths, and you begin to live by those truths, and you begin to live your life by those principles, it's those principles that will begin to create a perpetual environment for us that will sustain what I call the manifested presence of God around us, once you learn those truths. Uh, we find in the beginning, whenever God made man, that he made him in his image, and he placed man in a place called Eden. He placed him in the garden called Eden and gave man the authority to rule and to have dominion in the earth. And with that delegated dominion, man was supposed to take what he had in that garden and then begin to manifest what he had in that garden into the rest of the world. It was God's idea that man would take what Adam had in the garden and begin to export what Adam had in that garden and begin to make the whole world like that garden. And through that relationship that man had with God, understand today that we were never 
designed, or we were designed, let me put it to you this way, we were designed by God to take our fellowship, our intimate relationship with God and his presence, and we were to fill the earth with the evidence of that relationship. Okay? Either I'm not communicating very clearly or y'all st- still stuck on Star Wars. We, we were to take that, that evidence of that relationship and manifest it into the earth. We, we, were, to, we were to take what we had with God and we were to manifest it and have dominion and authority in the earth. Eden was not just a place, it was an environment. Eden was the presence of God, it was a realm. It's where man dwelled, he dwelled in the presence of God. And through that relationship, Adam was to manifest that presence everywhere he went because he lived in a realm, he lived in an environment. So the kingdom of God, this will be on the screen for you. So the kingdom of God is any place where the rule of God and the will of God is submitted to. Uh, You don't have the manifestation of the kingdom of God unless you're submitted to the rule of God. Because there are laws, there are precepts. Uh, Psalms 115 verse number 16 says, The highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. So it was God's idea that mankind would take that intimate relationship that he had with God and begin to walk through the earth and display that relationship openly to everybody around him so that the kingdom of God would be manifested everywhere man went. And wherever the kingdom of God was manifested, there would be dominion. Hmm. Uh, Wherever the kingdom of God was manifested, there would be this rulership. So now our ability... To have rulership in the earth can only extend, I'm just going to work this out for a moment, can only extend as far as our faithfulness to obey God's laws. Uh, Our ability to extend God's glory, His his realm, this, this, this Eden, this place of intimacy, this place of fellowship is always predicated on man's ability to obey God's laws, his precepts, his statutes. So God places in our lives principles for us to live by so that his presence can be sustained. I'm glad I don't serve a God that's schizophrenic. He's not here today and gone tomorrow. I believe he's a constant help in my time of trouble. So, 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 so in his, it's his principles, watch me now, that keeps us in right position so that God can bless and increase his glory. Hmm. Now, now, Psalms 19, I'm not going to take time to turn it there, but you can write it down. Psalms 19, 7 and Psalms 119, verses 1 through 3, 1, 3, verses 1 through 5, talks about how we are to obey God's laws, how we are to obey God's principles, how we are to adhere to his precepts, his statutes, his way of doing things. Uh, if you want God's blessings, you got to serve God the way he wants you to serve him. Uh, you, you, don't, you don't get the manifested kingdom of God operating in your life doing it the way you want to do it. <laughs> you, you serve God the way he wants you to serve him. And so, 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 so there are principles. And let me just show you a couple of things about principles. This will be on the screen, facts concerning principles. Number one, principles are permanent. Principles are permanent. Whether you agree with them or not, they're permanent. (laughs) Twelve inches will always be one foot. (laughs) Three feet will always be a yard. Jesus is always going to be the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can come to the Father except through him. It's a principle. and you, You can agree with it, you can like it or dislike it, but you don't change it. Because principles... Are permanent. Number two, principles work anywhere. Water freezes at 32 degrees. It don't matter if you're in Arizona or Alaska. It's a principle. Water boils at 212 degrees. Don't matter if you live in California or in Canada. 
It's going to boil at 212. The gospel of the kingdom works anywhere with anybody at any time. If you hear a preacher preaching the gospel and it don't work wherever they're preaching at, then it's not the true gospel. Because this gospel that we preach out of this Bible will work in Zimbabwe just like it will in the Glades region. Because it's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because principles will work anywhere. Number three, principles are there to protect. Applied principles protect the product. Everybody in here is wearing clothes, at least to my knowledge. <laughs> Somewhere on your clothes, there's a tag that tells you how to wash it. Tells you how to take care of it. Some of y'all don't believe me, just check it. Because ain't nobody knows more about that product than the manufacturer. You can treat it however you want to. But if you don't treat it the way the manufacturer tells you to treat it, then you, then, then you do away with the protection of it. That's why we have warranties. How I many know that if you don't take care of something under its warranty the way that you're supposed to, you can void the warranty? Then nobody knows more about their product than the manufacturer. Then nobody knows more about you than the person that created you. God knows more about you than anybody else. So there are principles that protect. Number four, principles cannot be broken. You can violate them. You can ignore them, but you can't break them. Gravity will work whether you believe it or not. Gravity will always be in place. You can ignore it, you can violate it, but you can't break it. I know you can pray in your prayer closet for three hours and come out and say, I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. Get up on the top of that building and keep singing till you have angelic presentations. And you can say, I can think about it every night and day. And jump off that building, and we'll tell you what we're going to say. Because <laughs> principles will work. Anywhere, at any time, and principles cannot be broken. I'm going somewhere. Just give me a few minutes. Principles have consequences. Number five, if you fall out of agreement with them, or if you disobey them, there are consequences to them. How many has ever had kids and say, don't touch that stove? It's hot. Don't touch it, Maddox. Don't touch it, Maddox. Don't touch it. I told you not to touch it. Right? There are consequences if you disobey them. Watch this now. And the judgment, the, the judgment is in the consequences, not in the devil. It's in the principle. Watch me now. When you don't tithe, it's not the devil that takes your money. It's the judgment in the consequences. And, and you, can, you can rebuke the devil all you want to. I bind you, get off my finances, but you ain't tithing? You're still operating under a curse. I can't find this Holy Ghost Church nowhere right now. Y'all making me work. You, it, it, it don't matter. You, 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 you can get your prayer teams together. You can go on a three-month fast and say, we're going to bind the devil over these finances until we get a breakthrough. But until you obey God with what you know, every time you don't obey God, there are consequences. The judgment is in the principle. Yeah? How many know, because we're living in a fatherless society, how many know if you, if you got a man that's good at making babies, but he ain't good at taking care of babies? It don't matter how much he confesses, the Lord is going to make me the head and not the tail. God ain't going to bless that joker. Because if you don't take care of what you already have, y'all not helping me. We 
which means I have control and I can change the direction of my life when I obey God. When I obey God, God begins to bless. God begins to multiply. And God begins to increase, increase because you don't get to serve God the way you want to. Good intentions, this will be on the screen, carried out in disobedience will still lead to consequences. I don't know why I'm stuck here, but, but if you took your tithe money and you went and bought groceries for somebody else, don't think God's going to bless you. You, you, might be, you might be kind, but you're still disobedient. Well, I'm just trying to help somebody. Listen, you, you, first of all, you need to help yourself by being obedient to God. <laughs> I, I, some of y'all look at me like, I can't believe he's saying this on Mother's Day. I showed an ACDC clip last week. I'll go for anything. So, 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 so if you... So good intentions, but there's still consequences when there's disobedience. For example, whenever they, in the Old Testament, whenever they got ready to move the Ark of the Covenant, God's presence, that three and a half foot box, there were, there were patterns, there were plans, and there were ways in how they had to handle that box. And if you did it out of order, there were consequences to it. You got to handle that box according to the pattern, the plan, and the precepts of God. This is the way God said Moses. Moses, this is how I want you to handle the box. You got to put some priest on each corner of that box and let them get up underneath that pole and let the priest carry the ark. If you do it out of order, then there's going to be consequences to it. I mean, you know that David figured that out when he was bringing the ark of, uh, of the covenant back into Jerusalem, and, he, and, he, and, and, the, and the ark stumbled because they were, it was on, it was on, a, it was on a, a cartwheel, and then it began to stumble when the oxen crossed the threshing floor, and Uzzah stuck his hand out there to try to steady it. In other words, he tried to manage God's glory out of his flesh, and God killed him because there was consequences for handling something out of order. Just, I'm going somewhere. The, the Old Testament is a type and a shadow of what is to come because God's glory had to be ushered in by God's people, the priest. The Bible teaches us that we are kings and priests unto God in the New Testament. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. So God's presence was to be carried on the back of the priest so that the glory could be ushered in to a place. Jesus comes along in the New Testament in Matthew 18, 20. He says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in their midst. God's glory is in the midst of his people. It's between the priest, us. Tap your neighbor and say, you're a priest unto the Lord. Watch me now. I'm going somewhere. We're about to praise this thing out. It's not the building that brings God's presence to a service. It's God's people. God's glory Gets here when you get here. It's, this ain't nothing but a sheep shed. And you can turn it into a bowling alley. But you can put some folks up in here that will worship God, and you can turn it into a Holy Ghost alley. Because it's, it's, it's God's glory doesn't just arrive here without his people. It's the people that bring his glory. That's why the enemy fights you on church day. Some of your greatest battles is just to get to come to church. Have you ever noticed that the kids go crazy on Sunday morning? Car don't want to run on Sunday morning. Unexpected phone calls come on Sunday morning. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. I'm going to preach this thing. It's like the greatest battle is to prevent you from getting to church. If you were going to the beach, those battles seem insignificant. Because you got command over them. But when you're coming to church, those battles have command over you. Because the object is, is to keep you from being gathered together so that you can display God's glory between one another. Because when God's glory begins to get displayed between one another, there is an invading presence that gets manifested 
and the kingdom of God begins to get established and the rulership of God begins to have dominion and you can have an atmosphere like this and you can have people gathered in here from every corner of this city and section of this area but when they come together when they left their home and came into God's house and they begin to lift up the, the name of the Lord the name that's above every other name all of a sudden the kingdom of God begins to get established and you can have disease that can get wiped out of people's faces you can have situations that can come against God's people you can have traumatic events turned around hope can arise victory can come the power of God can be manifested why because we came together as priests unto the Lord to obey God so we can release his authority so 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 that's why the enemy fights you so 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 when we're here when we're here now just this just using this as an example because you can use it anywhere but when we're here it becomes a sanctuary of his presence and some of the things wouldn't keep you out of church if you started just taking dominion over it. Because as long as the devil can trip you up with a runny nose, you go to work the next day. <laughs> I had somebody call me the other day and say, I ain't going to be able to make it to church. I'm not feeling good. And, and, and that, that, you know, I got, a, I, got a, I got a Holy Ghost on one side and I got a devil over here. And both of them talk at the same time. And, and when they said, I ain't going to be able to make it to church because I'm not feeling good, I'm, I, the devil said, I bet they go to work tomorrow. I bet they were at work today. Y'all not helping me. And, 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 you, and, and so, so, you know, smart aleck me, I had to say it. You going to work tomorrow? Yeah, well, you ought to be in church. If you're so sick you can't come to church, you better be really sick not to go to work. Y'all not helping me. Because, see, when you start making up excuses on why you don't live by principle, then everything in your life talks you out of the blessings of God. And then no matter how much you fast, how much you pray, how much you believe God, no matter how much you love God, how much God loves you, when you don't come into alignment with God, then the enemy takes dominion over you and the kingdom never gets established. Okay, so, so it's going to get lighter here in a minute, so just bear with me. See, see, that's why you have to press for an atmosphere in order to see something manifested. Here, here, this will be on the screen. The atmosphere we permit will determine the culture we create. Now, I'm saying all this because I'm going somewhere because God's about to do a thing. Therefore, watch this now, the presence of God, the presence of God, somebody shout the presence of God. The presence of God is accompanied by sound. God rides on sound. God is summoned by sound. Psalms 22.3, God inhabits the praises of of his people. Praise is necessary because it brings preparation for the seed of God's word. Luke 8 11, Jesus said, My word is like seed. Everything you read about in Genesis 1, when God began to create everything, when everything that God was speaking into existence, what he spoke into existence came out of him, came out of God because it was in him. He's all omnipotent, he's all potential. So everything he created existed in him first. Then he spoke it into existence by a word. All that we see around us is because God had potential omnipotence to speak it. Words, seeds, watch me now, have to have a right environment to produce. Words have to have a right environment to manifest. Don't want to get too graphic here, but, but, but y'all can track with me just on a little bit of it. How many know that a man's seed, sperm, needs a womb to produce? In order to produce or to manifest the things of God, it's got to move beyond just your head and into your heart because our heart is the womb our heart is the environment if the word of God is seed then our heart is the environment if information doesn't become revelation 
then it gets forgotten. And, and information will only stay in your head until a storm comes, a situation arises, pain, disappointments, or a crisis that it talks you out of what you should have. But when it moves into your heart, the right environment will produce. The Bible says we don't believe with our heads, we believe with our heart. Watch me now, about to preach this thing. Seed will work anytime, will work anywhere at any time, but the womb has to be prepared to receive it. So through our praise and worship, we are preparing the womb to receive the seed. <laughs> when, when, when people just come for the word, then all you're doing is taking from God and not giving anything back to God. Just because you were in a praise service don't mean you praised. Just because you were in church at a worship service don't mean you worshiped. I'm trying to help somebody to get blessed. Because you don't get to praise God the way you want to. Because God has a pattern. God has a way on, that, on and how he wants to be praised. So when you come into the house of the Lord, praise is not silent. Praise, listen, I, and you can throw it off on your childhood. You can throw it off on your insecurities. You can throw it off because you're an introvert. But I'm going to tell you something. Praise is not an introvert. Praise is an extrovert. And you don't just praise in your heart. You praise with your mouth. And I can walk you through scriptures where you praise with your hands. You clap your hands. You shout unto God with a voice of triumph. You shout. You dance. Even there's running. There's skipping. There's da dancing. All of these ways are ways that you praise God. So watch this now. You don't get to come to church and say, well, this is, I'm just going to praise God in my own way. I'm trying to tell you, you are violating principle. You are violating the word of God. And God does not bless what you violate. <sighs> So you have to come into the house of God with this attitude because if God's going to do a thing, he's not going to do it your way. He's going to do it his way. So when God wants to do it his way, he's looking for people that can come under any circumstances, under any situation and says, I've come with a praise. I've come here. Listen, I know, I, know the, I, know the, I know the argument. I know what you feel when you come in here because you're looking around. Your eyes are being cut. I wonder what they think if I lay, raise my hands. I, I saw them in Walmart the other day. I saw them over here. I I just want to, listen, you got to drop your fear and your pride and you got to get to a place where you abandon everything that you know that's keeping you back from being blessed. I don't know about you, but I'd rather have the blessings of God on my life than some accolade of any kind of a man can give me. I would rather be in fear and favor of God than have fear and favor of man any day of the week. And so there comes a time when you have to get to this place because God wants to do a thing, but he's not going to do a thing through a dry, doubly dead, plucked up by the roots, no kind of people that don't want to do it. Say, well, I'm just being spiritual. You're not being spiritual. You are being prideful. Let's call it what it is. Let's label it what it is. Well, I'm just not like that. Yes, you are. I've seen you at ball games. I've seen you in other places. You are crazy. You are radical. But don't let the devil talk you out of a blessing. Don't let the devil talk you out of the way you should respond to God. I'm going to preach this thing in a minute. It's about to, it's about to, it's, it's going to blow up. I got about 10 minutes if that clock is right. Really? Is that right? Mother's Day has messed me up. All right, watch this. Let me hurry. Praise and worship place us in a place. It puts us in a position or posture to receive God's word. I want to say something very bold and very strong here because I'm looking for a praise in church. You don't even receive the word of God until you praise. Because pra if praise is the womb, if praise is the environment, come on, Eden. If praise is the environment where the seed gets planted, if your heart has not been ready to receive the seed, then the seed will not take root. And what you'll do is you'll walk out here and say, that was a good service. But then you'll forget it by 1.30 when you're eating your chicken. Right? So, so, so you have to understand, when Jesus 
was making his way back into Jerusalem. This is all in your Bible in Luke 19. The Bible says that the crowds were worship him, worshiping him and singing praises unto him. That's all in 1937, Luke 1937. And the religious people around him didn't like it. And they wanted him to be quiet. Notice his statement. He said, if they get quiet, then the rocks around you are going to give me praise. Wait, wait, listen, Re religion says it don't take all that. <laughs> religion says you don't need all that. I'm trying to tell you, if God's about to do a thing, you need to break off this mentality that says, I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. No, God has a way that he wants to be praised. God has a standard on how he wants to be praised. And just so you'll know, God doesn't need your praise for him to act. God doesn't need your praise for him to change who he is. The Bible says he's God and he changes not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. God's not looking for your praise to make him become something that he's not. God's looking for your praise because it puts your, your praise puts you in a position of where he's in, where he is so that he can manifest his kingdom over your life mm -hmm. so, 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 so if you don't praise him the chairs are going to cry out the walls are going to sing, the trees, the Bible says the trees of the field will clap their hands because God is going to have a praise in the earth because it's through a praise that begins to execute the attitude of our hearts so that God can manifest his will. Now, I know some of y'all look at me like I lost my mind. I'm looking at you that you're still in your mind. Watch this. This will be on the screen. We must refuse to be conditioned by our tradition. Somebody coming, well, you know, I don't think, I don't think we have to do all that. It's your tradition. Well, I think we should only sing two fast songs and do about ten worship songs until we all fall into a coma. Well, I, I think we should I think we should just come in here and just sing the old hymns, because I really felt God in the old hymns. Well, I did too. In fact, if I can be honest with you, I don't like none of the music we sing today. I don't like none of it. That's just my personal preference. I don't like none of it. But it ain't going to stop me from praising God. I don't, I don't like, listen, I, 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 like, I like that old cut beat. I like it where if you're going to sing a song that wants me to dance, then put some music out there to make me dance. So it ain't, it ain't my style. It ain't my custom. But it is a precept. There is a pattern, and you have to hold to God's pattern if you want God to bless it. And we have been trained to respond to God on the basis of our feeling rather than our faith. Watch me now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this home. If you praise God only because you feel like it, you're going to miss a whole lot of God. Because you don't praise God just because you feel like it. You praise God because you believe he's able to do something. You praise God in faith, not knowing the outcome or the reasons why you're praising him. You praise him on credit. You put your faith out there and say, God, I trust you no matter what. And I'm going to sing these songs. I'm going to clap my hands. I'm going to lift my voice with every enemy around me, with every enemy coming to attack me. I'm going to lift up my hands. I'm going to lift up my heart. I'm going to lift up my praise. And it makes no difference what the outcome may be. What makes the difference is that I pull you into my environment where at least the kingdom of God can have some say over the situation. The Bible says that we are to, uh, Psalms 34 says that we, we, I will bless the Lord at all times. Come on, push on somebody and say all times. All times his praise shall continuously be in my mouth. Praise, watch me now, I'm just trying to help you. Praise is not an act of your will. We don't praise based on how we feel. I've watched, I've been in church way too long, and I've watched way too many church folks way too long. Well, I just don't really feel like it today. So, so you only praise when you feel like it. So you only get about one-third of the victories in your life. Well, I just, you know, I, I'm, I, this is just me, you know, I just, you know, I, I'm kind of quiet and reserved. 
The devil is a lie. No, you're not. I bet you I could change your mind. If I walked up to you and I said, I'm going to give you a million dollars. And all I need you to do is just shout to the top of your lungs and thank God for it. If you don't do that, then you won't get the million dollars. Some of you are like, well, shoot. I'll throw out a praise for a million. Shoot. That's all it takes? Like, thank you, Jesus. I'm in. I'm trying to help you. You should be in. Because what God does in your life is far more valuable than a million dollars on any given day. And you ought to have enough God on the inside of you that when the enemy comes in like a flood, there's a praise on the inside of me that says you won't take me out. You won't take me under. I've got enough God, and I'm not praising him because I feel like it. I'm not praising him because I got it all together. I'm not praising him because I don't have no pain. I'm not praising him because my kids are acting right. I'm praising God because he is worthy. I wish you would shout one time. Just, just, just stay standing. Just stay standing. Just stay standing. What? Well, just stay standing. Let, 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 let me, let me, let, I, y'all. This is crazy. That, that, this is crazy. That's why you have to know the difference. Watch me. I just don't. Nobody check out. The music team's gonna come. The worship team's gonna come. Just what? Get, give me five minutes, and I'm up out of here because we got to do the cake auction. And I know it's Mother's Day, and we want to celebrate. That's why you have to know the difference between tradition and doctrine. See, what, what, let, me, let me just help you. I want you to stay focused. Cultural traditions in the Pentecostal movement says that Pentecostals only speak in tongues when they're prompted by the Spirit. And they enter into worship when they're prompted by the Spirit. If that's true, then speaking in tongues is more of a function of my emotions than it is my will. And if that's true, then praise is more a function of my emotions than it is God's will. And I'm trying to tell you, it's not a funk. Your, your emotions are tied to it, but they're not limited by it. Your emotions are with it. That's why you better get some, you better get some victory over your crazy head that says it ain't worth that. It ain't, I don't need all that. Tell that to Jehoshaphat. Tell that to Jehoshaphat when he was surrounded by enemies. Y'all, y'all, no, y'all gonna have to help me up in here. Tell that to Jehoshaphat when he said, Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. You know what he was saying? He was saying, listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell my own head that the God that's gonna be with us is greater than the enemies that's coming against us. Let me put it to you in a New Testament verse. The greater one lives on the inside of you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Jehoshaphat said, Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And so watch now. Hold on, Michael. John. He said, he said here's what we got to do. When you get your attention on the Lord, you forget about what you need. I just lost half of y'all. When your attention is on the Lord, it's not about you now. It's about what God wants to do with you. So when you get your attention on the Lord, here's what the word of the Lord was. He said, call a fast. Call a prayer meeting. Get the people to pray in. Because there's no better way than to put your attention on the Lord than to have everybody pray to God. 
And when they were praying, they were reminding God, God, you said you gave us this land as a possession. You said you would deal with our enemies when they came in against us. You said, you said, God, you said. So when they were praying, they were reminding God, not that God had forgotten, but they were communicating to their head, to their soulish ability to bind and rebuke the things that God would never let them step into unless they got victory over it. So they were saying, God, this is what you said. It's not that God forgot. It's just that sometimes you got to position your life to a place where the power of God can be manifested. So out of that prayer meeting, a prophet stands up. Trust in the Lord. Believe in his prophets and you will have success. And then the word of the Lord comes about and says, this battle has nothing to do with you. This is not your battle. This is the Lord's. But position yourself. Station yourself so that you can see the salvation of the Lord. You can't see something unless you're in the right position to receive something. I'm about to go there. Give me, give me two more minutes and we're going to go there. He said, this battle is not yours, but it's the Lord. And so the word was, tell Judah. Judah means praise. Tell Judah to get the praisers out front. I wish you'd turn around and high five about three people and tell them we need some praisers right about now. Are you part of the tribe or not? He said, get the praisers. Watch this now. He said, get the praisers out front. Come on, Eden. Come on, environment. Come on, environment. Because God's about to manifest something if he can get the right environment. Because everything in life follows sound. You hear the jet before you see it. You hear the helicopter before you see it. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you hear it before you see it. So Jehoshaphat said, this is what we're going to do. If we're going to win a battle that we have no ability to win apart from God, we better get the right environment. We can't have Billy Bob over here saying, well, shoot, I don't feel like it today. We can't have backbiting sister so-and-so saying, that ain't my job. I'm an intercessor. We, 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 don't, we don't need Bubba saying, I ain't never praised like that. I'm trying to help somebody. We, 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 don't, need, we don't need your excuses because God has a way of being praised and it has nothing to do with your tradition. Because we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna break something loose. So, so, so he said, get Judah out there. Get the praisers out there. And let them begin to sing. Let them begin to magnify the Lord. Let them begin to lift up their voices towards the Lord. And the Bible says this. I don't have to take you through the whole story all over again. But the Bible says this. When Judah began to praise. When Judah began to verbally open up their mouth. When Judah said, this is not about me, it's about what God's going to do through me. The Bible says when Judah began to praise that the Lord, oh Lord, here, here we go. The Lord put an ambush against his enemies. 
I'm telling you, I was praying in the Holy Ghost this morning, and this is all on me because I heard the Lord say that the word ambush literally means to be concealed, to be hidden, and then all of a sudden you leap out on its prey. It means like it was in a secret attack that nobody saw it coming. And I heard the Lord say, the devil's been pushing, the devil's been a Attacking. The devil's been working, but I'm about to put an ambush. God's about to put an ambush on your enemies. God's about to put an ambush on those things that have been threatening you. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I wish somebody would just understand one principle, and that is you praise your way through. Come on, throw your hands up and praise him one time. through it all. we're going to go but but just somebody say I, I hear it before I see it Elijah could hear the sound of abundance before he saw it living in a three year drought without any evidence of rain coming out of the sky. He said, I hear the sound of an abundance. The people of Israel marched around Jericho and they shouted before the walls fell. In Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, they heard the sound of a mighty rushing wind before they saw cloven tongues of fire. Y'all not hearing, y'all not hearing it. Jehoshaphat heard the Lord say, somebody just give me a praise and I'll show up with my authority. I'll show up with my power and I'll show you what I can do to your enemy because I'm about to do a thing. I need everybody in the building to throw your hands up and act like you know God oh, is about to execute vengeance on your enemies. Come on, give me praise. We're not trying to worship. I'm trying to praise. I'm trying to praise. I'm trying to praise. Listen, I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know you're feeling uncomfortable right now, but that's God trying to shake you loose a little bit. I know you're ready to go right now, but God's just saying, give me 30 seconds. Give me 30 seconds of something that you can offer to me that's literally going to reroute the enemies in your life. I'm going to give you a chance. Come, I just want the music. Just come on, Michael. Go. Boom, boom. Come on, Michael. On the count of three. One, two, three. Come on and give it praise. 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 Create the environment. Create the environment. Create it, create it, create it. When God shows up, what will it look like when God shows up? What will your enemies look like when God gets there? What will it be like when God gets to your place? Ha! Hey! 
Praise him over your circumstances. Praise him over your battles. Praise him over your situations. He's worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. See, uh, let me tell you what I'm up against. No reflection on anybody or any one thing. It's just a spirit. It's a spirit that says all this ain't necessary. It's just a spirit. And the reason why people don't let it go the way that they should is because you ain't been in trouble long enough. You, you ain't had enough hard knocks yet. I, I, know, I know when Karen and I, when we were raising our kids and, 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 and Brittany got off track, and just kind of doing what some teenagers do. We, we had this battle in our house. i tell you what I would do. Really wouldn't have to do with any of them. I would walk into Brittany's room. I don't feel like praising God. I don't feel like speaking in tongues. I don't feel like, I don't feel, I don't, but I would walk in her room. I'd lay across her bed and I'd say, Lord, let the blood of Jesus cover this bed. Lord, let the power of God get inside these sheets. Let it get up underneath this blanket so every time she lays her head down, you're going to be talking to her. Your voice will be louder than the enemy's voice. I'm telling you, you got to have a praise. You, and I, and, I, and I, 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 I'm not making this up. My, my wife would tell I would lay on that bed for hours. I would lay and I would wail in the Holy Ghost. You know why? Because I didn't want to lose my child. I didn't want to lose this gift. I didn't want to lose something that God put me entrusted with. So I would do it for hours. Everybody else can call me crazy. Everybody else can say that don't make sense. But look at her today. She's praising God. She loves God. That, that, I'm telling you, see, see, until you get enough pain in your life, until you have enough setbacks in your life, then it don't mean nothing. It's just, it's just an emotional event. It has nothing to do with emotions. Come on, Judah. You got to stand in your position. You got to stand in your place. Isaiah 66, 8 says, let the sound of the Lord be heard. The sound of God coming out of my mouth has to be more powerful than the sound of the enemy coming into my head. When you begin to push back like that, you create an environment built on principle, not emotions. You create an environment around your life so when God shows up, your enemies have just ran into an ambush. Whew. There's some enemies over your life. I'm going to make this prayer, but there's some enemies over your life. They thought that they had you down for the last count. They said, this is it. This is going to do them in, and we're going to get the victory. But I'm trying to tell you today, the victory belongs to the Lord because it's his battle and not yours. That almighty. So I don't praise God because it's right or I feel like it, it's the good moment. I praise him because his word declares, let the high praises of God be in my mouth and a two-edged sword in my hand. All over this building, if you got, you're facing a battle right now and you feel like the enemies have come in on every side and they are surrounding you, just go and make a prayer, throw your hand up really high. You say, Lord, I need this prayer right now. You say, Lord, the enemy is coming in. Throw it up really high, there you go. Look all around you. People's hands are going up. Listen, some of you have been talked out of your faith. You've been talked out of church. You've been talked out of serving God. You just, you're just out there. 
you're out there, but I'm telling you, God's about to put an ambush on your enemies. God's about to put an ambush. Come on, raise your hand. Say, my hand is raised with you because I, I've had some enemies. I've had some enemies, and I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed to say I've had some attacks on my life, but I'm ready for an ambush. I'm ready for a Holy Ghost ambush to come in the name of Jesus. Come on, on the count of three, everybody lift your voice, and we're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, one, two, three, everybody pray. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we speak to every principality. We speak to every power. We speak to every lion spirit. We speak to every demonic force. We speak to every word every language that has come into our minds and into our heads we speak to it now in the name of Jesus we cast down in vain imaginations we cast down thoughts that have rose up against the knowledge of God we take authority over it now in the name of Jesus we pull down strongholds we pull down the authority of the enemy and we declare let thy kingdom come let thy kingdom come Come, let thy kingdom come. Let it come on earth just like it is in heaven. Now, if you believe that God is turning it, you ought to give him the biggest shout. 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 He's turning it around. The battle belongs to the Lord. Come. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, give it about 20 more seconds. Give it about 20 more seconds. Give God a praise like you know Judah. Give God a praise like you know Jehoshaphat. Give him praise. Give him praise. Let the high praises of God, let it come up out of your mouth. I would praise him if nobody cared. I would praise him like nobody wanted to. I would praise him like this was my last chance on this planet. I would praise him because I know he is good. He is good. He's a good God. He's a faithful God. He's an ever-loving God. Yes! This is what I would do. This is what I would do. See, the greatest sign of Christian maturity is when you're not led by your emotions, but you're led by what you believe. It's the greatest sign of Christian maturity that you can have. When my emotions don't dictate to me how worthy God is. And let me just qualify everything I said today. Praise is always attached to an outward expression of an inward desire. That's why your praise cannot be silenced. I don't care how spiritual you make it. That's tradition. Because Jesus himself said, if these people don't give me praise, I'm going to let the rocks open up their mouth. I'm going to let the rocks cry. If, if, if my people won't verbally say how good I am, not that I have to have it to move, but you need to know how good I can be with you. <sighs> praise is my outward, visible expression of the tangible evidence of what I believe God's going to do in my life. And praise has nothing to do with your geographical location. Has nothing to do with your ability to sing. Praise is based on the attitude of your heart that says, if God be for me. Talk to me up in this house. If God be for me, what in the world could be against me. That's the way it is. So, Father, I speak today. I speak today over every life. I speak today over every heart. I 
speak today over every struggling person that's struggling in their walk with you today because the enemy has run roughshod over their life. And there's a struggle, there's a battle because they don't know if they can trust you. They don't know if you will come through. God, I just remind them today that you're not a man that you should lie, nor the son of a man that you should repent. If you said it, you'll do it. And if you spoke it, you'll bring it to pass. All over this building, hands went up all over this building. So we're praying for a multiple needs right now. Hands are going and went up. People are just in the valley of decision. That's where they came. They came to the valley of Baraka. They came to the valley of decision where they had to make a stand so the Spirit of God could be released. So all over this building today, I pray for that peace to invade your life, to invade your circumstances. And I call you up and over. I call you more than victorious. And we speak a blessing over your life in the name of Jesus. Will every mom in the room just raise your hand real quick? Every mom in the room. Can somebody put your hand on a mom today? Say, Lord, we bless all of these wonderful moms. What a gift they are to the body of Christ. What an incredible gift they are to the kingdom of God. Godly moms that are raising godly children, raising young warriors in the faith that are not intimidated by the world, not overcome by the devil, but they're moms who's instilling faith and virtue, principle and guidance, unctions, impartations over their children today. We thank you today for these Proverbs 31 women, women who their children will rise up, call them blessed. They will be praised in the streets. They will be praised in their homes. They will be women of business, homemakers, women who have an understanding of the things of God. And they will walk with the authority of heaven. And they will release the will of God in the name of Jesus. We speak that blessing and we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. And everybody, come on, if you believe it's been a good day, come on, put your hands together. Give somebody a big old Holy Ghost hug. Will you do that?